Howdy folks, this is Brian Larson from Texas A&M University School of Law uh, recording a, a brief video that uh, shows some of the things that I was showing audience members in a presentation at Legal Writing Institute uh, Conference uh, in 2022 in July. So um, if you'll follow along with me, I'll show you how to make effective use of Google uh, Scholar for doing research uh, outside the legal communication field, but on matters that are of interest to us. Okay, assume that this is your research predicament. Your area of interest is universal design in legal writing education. And one source of your inspiration as you've been thinking about uh, othering and design uh, and education is Bell Hook's uh, book, Teaching to Transgress. The question you have is whether folks who have written about your uh, research question in fields that are adjacent to legal communication. Uh, of course, the usual suspects for doing research in our field are things like Westlaw, Lexis, Hine Online, and other legal research platforms. You may also be using the bibliographies in our field, like those in Volume 18, of legal communication and rhetoric, which I would strongly recommend you using us as a starting point. Uh, and also, you may be using the Legal Writing Institute monographs if one covers your topic. And then, of course, there are the uh, fields journals, uh, journals specific to our field, including legal writing, legal communication and rhetoric, the second draft, and perspectives. Those are good places to start to make sure that you understand whether your topic has been treated in our field before you looking before you go looking further afield. But I'm proposing that you also consider looking into adjacent fields that are worth exploring for legal communication folks. Um, the fields that you see listed here, rhetoric and composition, theater technical communication, argumentation theory, and writing studies. Um, these fields have all investigated subject matter that's very central to the legal communication sphere. These, uh, these other disciplines have developed theoretical frameworks uh, and uh, empirical methods to do their work. And so you should be uh, considering whether you can uh, import uh, what they do in terms of their methods or use their theoretical frameworks as a guide to help you along your way. So when it comes to studying, studying search, <laughs> getting, so when it starts to getting your initial search terms, um, I always suggest that students and faculty start with Wikipedia. Because uh, if we go to the Wikipedia page for universal design, uh, what we find uh, almost immediately is that there are synonyms for uh, universal design that the authors of the Wikipedia pages use. Uh, so in this case, we see there's a, sim there's a, um, a synonym which is barrier-free, an earlier term that was used for these kinds of um, uh, principles. And then if we scroll down a little bit further, let's see, where is it here? Uh, maybe there it is. You'll also see that the term inclusive design comes up. Um, so we now have accumulated um, three terms that we probably want to search for, in universal design, inclusive design, and barrier-free design. If we go to the Google Scholar uh, main page, uh, we can construct a Boolean search uh, that looks for articles that have at least one of those phrases in them. And you can see here that all three of our um, phrases are represented. You'll also three see that I've added two other phrases uh, professional education and professional pedagogy um, so that we can um, narrow the results just a little bit because we get a huge uh, number of results if we uh, just looked at anything that had universal design in it. Um, and uh, the, the uh, vertical pipes indicate or in, uh, in searches in Google Scholar and the parentheses have the same effect they have when you do terms and connectors searching in Westlaw or Lexis. Uh, so if you want to learn how to do advanced searching in Google Scholar, my advice is to go out and find a YouTube video on that. There, there are plenty of those around. All right, so let's see what the results are that we get. Here, we'll, you'll see that there's a list of the articles. 
There's a snippet of each one. You don't get to see the whole abstract. You just get to see a snippet of each one. Um, and it's a little bit of information off to the right-hand side. Um, but let's, assi uh, let's assume for the moment that we're interested in one of these in particular, the strategies and effectiveness um, in a cross-faculty setting. So that's the one that we want to actually take a look at. And you'll notice right away that there's information here about how often it's been cited, and we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, and then you'll notice there's an indicator here that there's more than one version of this file. And that's also something that we'll come back to in a moment. If we actually go to the article itself, uh, we're taken to the publisher's page uh, where uh, we get a lot of information about the article. So in this case, you can see uh, just beneath the title here, uh, there is uh, a bunch of bibliographic information, all the stuff that you would need uh, to write a, a blue book entry about the article. Um, and that stuff appears here. But there's something sort of much more useful than that here, and that's a link that says Download Citation. Uh, if you click on that link, you'll be taken to a page where you'll have to make a couple of selections, right? So it'll ask you what format you want. Do you want RIS or RefMan? And then it'll also ask you whether you want to include the abstract. I always include the abstract. And then you click on Download. And then your Zotero program, which you know you need to have installed, uh, will actually import that. Um, so it takes a, just a second or two. Uh, and then if we go to the top of Zotero and we search for the author of that article, in our Zotero uh, uh, entry now, we will have all the bibliographical information for this article. Uh, now, much as I love Zotero, you do actually need to just read through the stuff that it imports because it can only import the information that the journal puts into the file that it sends over. And sometimes the journals aren't very good about getting the information into the right slots. So you just have to take a quick look here, proofread it, uh, to make sure you're satisfied with how it came in. Okay, so you can see this stuff in Zotero. That's cool. We'll go back to the article. Um, while we're in the article, we can take a quick look at the abstract and see if we're interested in reading the whole thing. Um, usually the abstracts in academic articles are, are briefer than in a lot of law review articles and they often, if they're empirical, will give you an idea of what kind of methods were used in the, in the study and what the findings were basically. Um, in this particular article you can just click on the PDF link there and you can download the article. It doesn't cost you anything uh, and you can store that uh, on your computer and, and read it for purposes of doing your own research. Uh, but assuming that they would have tried to pay, make you pay there, you can go back to the Google uh, Scholar screen and you can click on this all X versions. And what Google Scholar will do is it'll show you uh, what other versions of this document are available on the internet. And oftentimes, if an article is behind a paywall at the, at the publisher, you can find it posted somewhere else uh, by using that multiple versions uh, tool. Um, in my own experience, um, it's uh, usually going to be on a like Scholar's uh, Selected Works website or something that you're going to be able to download it or on their institutional uh, repository. If a lot of universities uh, require that faculty put copies of their work on the institutional repository. Okay, so if you'll remember, we were really originally interested in uh, looking for connections between the subject matter and uh, teaching to transgress by bell hooks. So an another thing we can do here when we've got a book that we're interested in exploring is to paste the title and author of the book into Google Scholar. So this isn't Google Books, this is Google Scholar. And you can see, you can see here that the book comes up in the search results. You know it's a book because it says book at the beginning of its entry. Um, and another thing you can see about this particular book is it's been cited almost 7,000 times. Um, so if you want to know whether the texts that you're interested in are using this text as, as their own, you can click on the um, site. And what you'll notice about, about this page um, is near the top, it uh, invites you uh, in a place where it names the book that you're looking at. 
it invites you to click a box that says search within citing articles. And if you check that box, um, the list that appears below here, you can add uh, search criteria to this top bar. And when you do so, the search results that you get uh, choose to execute a search only with articles within the articles that cite Hooke's teaching to transgress. You can find folks who've done universal design work um, and who have cited uh, uh, Bell Hooks book. So I just copied and pasted in the uh, search criteria that uh, we used when we did our original search. And now we have items from that original search that have cited the Bell Hooks book that we're interested in. And of course you can use this method uh, just as you would or just as you would advise your students to use it uh, where if they're pulling up uh, articles that they find useful they should check the bibliographies of those articles and run to ground some of the leading works that are cited by um, the people that you're reading. And then you can use Google so Scholar to cite forward from the article that you're reading to see how other people have reacted to it or interacted with it. Uh, an important thing, I think, if you're going to identify a book that you want to use from outside our field uh, as a source, you probably want to go out and read some of the reviews of that book uh, just to see if there are any blind spots in the scholarship that appears in it. Uh, so that's all I have for today, and I hope this helps you with your researching.